What's up guys, Clark Shaw here with Six Pack Shortcuts and I got my boy Henry Tran. What's up y'all? And we're here to discuss one of the most frequently asked questions by guys just getting started in the weight room, which is how can skinny guys pack on some serious mass? So Henry, you're a pretty tall guy and most tall guys already are at a slight disadvantage as far as putting on some serious mass. So how did you start putting on some serious size on your frame? Well. First, I had to you know, understand what type of body type I was. So I was an ectomorph, so I was just naturally skinny, naturally this long and lanky, right? So I had to do extra eating to get some mass on me. So uh, to begin with, I just ate. I just made sure I could eat, eat, eat. And um, it's just, it wasn't just eating whatever you saw in front of you, right? It's making the correct choices, getting your correct amount of protein, carbs, uh, in per day, so it's definitely eating. You need to make sure you get enough food intake because if you're exerting a lot of energy and getting, you know, putting a lot of uh, effort into your workouts, you're going to need to eat. So you're telling me that your muscles don't grow from the air you breathe; it comes from the nutrients. No, no, you like put in. I wish money grew on trees too, but that doesn't happen. So you got to feed your muscles, right? Yeah, you do. Okay, so when you work out, you don't actually build the muscle when you're working out. You're stimulating the muscle growth but you got to feed your muscles that's right okay so feed your muscles okay so that is the answer to that question right there speaking of feeding your muscles do you eat like crazy to put on size no i don't eat like crazy but i do eat effectively and i do eat on schedule so when i mean on schedule i'm getting in seven meals a day uh, and making sure i'll eat every two to three hours so i mean some people might call that crazy i call that normal um, but yeah, make sure you're, you're getting that food intake every two to three hours um, and making that metabolism work and just feeding the muscles. You got to feed the muscles and make them grow. So you definitely want to keep a steady supply of nutrients 24 hours throughout the day and that way your muscles are constantly being fed those nutrients and you're constantly growing. That's right. Cool, cool. What are some of the foods that work really well for gaining lean mass, not sloppy mass? All right, so with lean mass, you of course want to stick with lean proteins, right? So it's chicken breast, ground turkey, and I always, if you're trying to be, uh, build mass, I definitely grow, throw in uh, beef into my diet. So you can actually play with those within it, so you can choose what type of uh, fat percentage you want with it. So if you're trying to gain some mass, keep to those lean proteins, but you can get kind of like the fattier versions of it. So for example, if you're doing ground turkey, there's 93% lean or there's 99% lean. So if you're trying to bulk, I would use 93% lean because your body do need that fat to kind of fuel and get a better workout and exert more energy. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, ground beef, uh, ground beef is a great part of your diet for getting mass. And I usually use, um, in my diet, I use a 96% lean ground beef, but you can go as low as 80 you know, if you want to get really fatty. But I would stay, stay within the 90% the lean ground beef if you're trying to bring, build lean mass. Mm -hmm. So um, those are the, the key proteins that I would use to you know, gain lean mass. Got it. And also, red meat does contain creatine too, mm -hmm. which is also very effective and helpful for putting on mass. So right. you don't want to leave out the beef as well. Um, speaking of the fat content, you, you know, you could actually manually adjust it. This is how I learned how to do it. So if I wanted it a little bit leaner and they didn't have it in the store and I cooked up some ground beef, I would actually take a strainer, put the beef in there and smush it down until all of that grease and juice just kind mm -hmm. of came out of it and then I'd run it under hot water as if I'm rinsing some extra oil out of it. Yeah. So you can actually you know, press more of the fat out of it and then rinse it for even a leaner effect on the beef. Yeah, so you're not eating that, you know, excess greasy residue that's left behind. And stuff yeah, because like um, you do want healthy fats in your diet because, well, guys need a certain amount of fat in their diet in order to maintain high testosterone levels mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to cut all your fats out, but you want the healthy fat sources, just not the artery clogging, saturated, yeah. unhealthy fats. Yeah. Okay, so. Next question I have for you. This is something that is commonly left out. Does sleep help you make gains? And sleep is a big key in making gains. It's something that I don't get enough of and I wish I did, but uh, sleep plays a major role into repairing and recovery of your muscles. So I, you know, a normal person was what, supposed to get like eight hours of sleep. Um, I only get maybe six hours on a good day. So within that six hours, you're only getting quality sleep, um, REM sleep of maybe maybe four, maybe five hours tops of that six hours I get. So if you're only getting like 
four hours of sleep a day, well, you know, what type of quality sleep are you getting within that? So mm-hmm. your muscles aren't repairing and recovering the way they should, um, you know, when you're in the gym, you know, or wherever working out. So it, you need to get sleep to, in order for your muscles to repair. I mean, that's, that's why us humans need to sleep, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's when a lot of the body's chemical processes take place. And it's only during sleep, when you were talking about the REM sleep, the REM, your pituitary actually releases growth hormone. Growth hormone regulates testosterone. And again, testosterone is how you get lean and muscular. So if you're sleep deprived, your testosterone levels are low. So A, you're at a disadvantage as far as your hormones go. And B, you're not letting your muscle recover and build. So you actually grow during your recovery process, which is your nutrition and your rest. That's right. Um, So let's just say you try to get seven hours of sleep, but what's more important, like you said earlier, is the quality of the sleep and you, your schedule just does not allow you to get seven hours of sleep. Uh, here's one trick that I did learn. If you want to get more REM sleep and fall into that deeper stage of sleep faster, um, try to prime your sleep environment in order for you to get a better night's sleep. So try to keep it so it's uninterrupted. Turn your phone off, turn all the noise off, any ringers. You know, I even sleep with earplugs, foam earplugs. Mm-hmm. And me personally, I like it to be like a cave. Yeah. So I'll make it dark, I'll make it cold. So, you know, when I fall asleep, if it's not the right environment, I, I'm not in that REM because I'm kind of lightly sleeping. But if I prime my sleep environment perfectly, man, within like 10 minutes of falling asleep, I'm yeah, you're out. Dead. You know, so that way I can get into that REM stage a lot quicker. Yeah, that's great advice. Let's talk about your workout routine. Mm-hmm. What does it currently consist of? Is it high reps, low reps, high weight, lightweight? It's a, actually, it's a combination of, of all of it. Um, you do you need heavy training, you do need volume training, high reps uh, in your workout. So I like to engage in you know, how my body's feeling that day. If I'm feeling good and um, I haven't done like you know, maybe a heavy week yet, I'll, I'll take the weight up and uh, do some heavy repetitions. Um, but always in my workout, I kind of keep my reps in the higher range because I want to make sure that I'm engaging that muscle, getting that quality build and uh, you know, tearing those fibers up and getting that density in that muscle and creating, you know, muscle striations. So I always keep my reps up um, to build that endurance, right? So you don't want to have just a, you know, strong body for a short period of time. You want to make sure you can last throughout the workout and have that endurance strength, as you can say. So um, I have a combination of all those together. Um, Yeah. So you're basically targeting all the different types of muscle fibers by changing it up. You're doing the red fast twitch, the red slow twitch, the white fast twitch. Yeah. So that way you remain functional. You have your strength, you have your stamina, you have your endurance. You're building all the different types of muscle fibers. That's right. And I like to, big thing I like to do is I like to superset exercises to get that extra pump in and to tear that muscle a little further. So I do a lot of uh, superset incorporating in my workouts. You know, you just reminded me, I, I wanted to, uh, uh, talk to you guys about this. I did a video uh, earlier about uh, getting a a bicep arm pump in which I did like a 10 minute superset and I got maximum pump and I put like an inch and a half in my arms and you know that was for fun and I do read read the comments and guys are like well what's the point of a pump if it's just temporary right? Well obviously your arm's not going to stay big that long but the point of a pump is this okay the more blood you pump into a muscle see your red blood cells (coughs) bless you your red blood cells carry a lot of nutrients and it's the blood that flows into the muscle that carries all the nutrients that are key to growth and recovery so the greater you can get a pump into the muscle the more nutrients you're putting into the muscle which is going to stimulate further growth and development and strength so although you know the pump is aesthetic it looks cool for you know temporarily whenever you know you can get a pump before you go out it'll last you maybe an hour or so (laughs) it's not gonna last forever yes but uh, I know one of you guys asked what is the point if it just goes away well that's the point is trying to pump all those nutrients into the blood and I actually read recently in a a recent article in uh, men's health magazine talking about blood flow restriction training Uh which uh, has been proven to be pretty effective uh, as far as studies have shown, and that's the same concept. It's basically keeping the blood pumped and filled into the muscle. So I just wanted to answer that question for you guys, and we do read the comments, so but let's summarize this up. For the final question is, what is your number one tip for skinny guys to build lean mass? 
Uh, my number one tip is kind of a kind of a two part thing. It's being consistent and being committed, right? So for us, we're gonna have to work extra hard. So you're gonna have to be fully committed in your workouts and making sure that you're feeding your body effectively and regularly uh, in your meals. So yeah, if you wanna gain that mass, you're gonna have to step it up and put that time into your workouts, put that quality workout into uh, your training and uh, make sure you, you feed your body um, when it needs to be fed. You know, stay on top of your eating and um, that's, that's pretty much how you're gonna get some lean mass on you. Definitely. And a lot of guys don't know this, but I used to be a toothpick as well. No, I was. Yeah, so I mean, the story of my life, but I just wanted to lift to gain some mass. And I was lifting, but I wasn't gaining the mass. And then back to what we were talking about, you gotta feed your muscles. So just lifting wasn't putting on mass, and just eating a ton of food wasn't putting on mass. But when I combined lifting, which is stimulating the muscle growth, so now my muscles are hungry. Mm -hmm. And then now I eat the food, and then it starts to build. See, if you are a skinny guy, and you just start eating more, you're either A, just gonna put it through your digestive system and your body's not gonna hold it, so it's just kind of pointless, or B, you're gonna store it as fat. So you want to stimulate the growth by lifting heavy, right? Make your muscles hungry for those nutrients, yeah. feed your muscles, get plenty of rest, and then you'll start to grow. Um, that was my first stage, and then I started getting you know, some, some pecs, I started getting yeah. biceps and shoulders, and I was happy, and then as I started to get getting a little bit older, I continued to just eat, 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 eat. And then that's when I learned that the source of your nutrients key, mattered. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys have seen, they, uh, we just posted a before and after picture of me where I kind of have this little belly. I mean, you know, I had some, some muscularity on me, but I started getting a belly because that's all I knew was lift and eat. And then that's when I had to learn the right foods. Yeah. So yeah, I went from skinny to being built and then I started getting kind of fat and then I once I you know trial and error and then now I've learned how to stay built and stay lean yeah. by doing combination of everything we just talked about yeah definitely I followed that same kind of that same path uh, you just learn you know you experiment things you learn how what things are effective for your body mm -hmm. and uh, you kind of go through those transitions and like in my earlier stages I was you know again just trying to eat whatever I could so I got bulky but um, it was just pure bulk and mass. It you know didn't have the you know striations and the muscles. You look good with the with the shirt yeah, on, you, you but you didn't want to take it off. You feel the shirt, but once you <laughs> feel it off, you just look kind of one one piece. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No separation. So you know throughout you know my uh, years of lifting, you just kind of learn to uh, engage in what's effective, and then again uh, being um, with what's you know the right things to eat. You start learning the aspects of nutrition and you know what when and what the right things are. And those play a you know a key role into um, getting that physique you want. So you know we weren't just blessed with certain physiques like we've been skinny, and then we've been chubby, and we've been lean and muscular. So we've we, we've been through it, and we, you know so we can kind of relate to how a lot of you guys feel out there. So just stay tuned. You know we're here to help you guys. Again, next time check us out. My name is Clark Shaw, Six Pack Shortcuts, and this is Henry Tran. All right, we're going to see you later, so stay locked on sixpackshortcuts.com. Yes, sir.